Hello friends and enemies, welcome to Happy For Now It's Me as well here with a fun video. So this is fully inspired by Heather over at Heal Booktubes and staff over at Novelty Corner did this. I don't know who else has done it since I'm doing it now, but I'm just saying I saw this and I was like, oh, I need to do that. That's a fun one. And it's silly. And listen, none of this is personal. You do, you need to do what you need to do for your own channel. And I'm going to do what I need to do for my channel, if that makes sense. So these are the things I will never do as a booktuber slash don't worry about as a content creator sort of mix up thing. So again, these are the things I prioritize for my channel and my content. You're going to do different things for your channel and your content. But for me, this is kind of like some of the tenants I live by that I have internalized over making content over the few last few years. So first thing that I am very big on, and I think it's apparent, is that I will not do anything beyond foster a community that reflects my views. So I am not going to sacrifice my personal views or standpoints to create community on my channel that doesn't reflect those reviews right back at me. I do not like tolerate people being like cruel or overly mean in my comment section because I just that's not what I want here. Now we can have discourse, we can have discussion about different points, we can disagree. Do not get me wrong, but I'm not going to allow people who are going to just come into my comments. This specifically applies to some of my videos that like get a little hotter of takes and like shit talk romance readers or shit talk people for caring and people for wanting to do better and learn and expand things like we're not tolerating that here so for me like it's really really important that i feel my comment section and the community i have in my comments and outside of my comment section it reflects me as a creator so like i never want to see people like being rude we just don't do that there sometimes as creators we don't always see the replies people make to other posts so if you ever are in my comment section and somebody is being obtuse for no reason and trying to just be difficult to be difficult, let me know, like hit me up on DM on Insta or somewhere and just be like, hey, FYI, this person's doing this in the comments. I try to monitor it, especially like I said, on Romance Ladies and stuff, but there are times where I, I don't, I'm sure I've not caught it. I want anyone who is in a marginalized identity or an underrepresented identity to feel safe in the comment sections of my videos. I do not want them to be worried about being attacked because that is not happening and I just will not allow it. Next, I'm never anymore, I don't know, I've probably done it before, I'm gonna apologize for missing an upload. So I will like communicate out usually if I am gonna miss or I will tell you like schedules shifted this week. But even then, I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do. I don't think I need to apologize for missing an upload. This isn't my full-time job in any capacity. This is a hobby, a thing I love doing, and I do it because I enjoy making content, not for really many other reasons at this point. But I'm never gonna apologize for being late or missing an upload. I may like let my members know like what's up or again, post on the community tab to just be like, hey, missing an upload today. That's it. Like I just, I'm not gonna be sorry about it. Life happens. We are allowed to miss things. We don't have to be perfect. Um, so yeah, I just don't apologize for it. <laughs> Another thing, this is a funny one. So especially as I've grown in size, it's something that I continue to like contemplate how I handle. So I will not reveal specific things. So like I am pretty like, I mean, I live outside, I live around Nashville. Y'all know that. Some of you who watch my channel have commented that you know where I'm at because you recognize things and that's fine. I don't care. You know, you can say hi to me if you saw me out and about. Like I don't, I don't mind if I ran into anyone. I'd be, you know, I'm thrilled to say hi to chat, whatever, book events, anywhere I go. But <laughs> I will never in real time reveal where I am. This is just something that has been beat into my brain on the internet at this point in my life. Like I see so many people do this where they post like real time TikToks and other things of their travels. And I just, you don't need to know where I am in this exact moment. Am I, am I in my house? Am I out at Target? Like you don't need to know that. You know what I mean? Like you don't need that real time. I don't think it benefits the viewer for it being real time. But second of all, it doesn't benefit me as a creator. It it hurts my safety. The same thing, like I don't show my streets that I live on. I don't show the streets, the streets close to my house necessarily. I'm not going to show you like exactly where I am, if that makes sense. Like I can get B-roll of stores and places I'm going without it revealing like, oh, you live in XYZ town. And you know, every day, every whatever day of the week you're at XYZ store. You don't need that info. I will, now there's one caveat to this whole rule, and that is that when I go to book events, I will do it in real time because generally speaking, I'm traveling with multiple people and I have friends with me and we're all going to this event. So like, I want you to be able to find me if you wanna say hi, right? 
I don't, I don't want it to be cagey that like, I'm on a trip. Like, no, I just want you to be able to be like, oh my gosh, you're here. I want to say hi to you while you were here. So that's a big thing for me. Like book events, yes, I will tell you I'm there. But I will not reveal <laughs> other travels as they're happening. Um, generally speaking, my videos will go up and I'll come back and you'll get a vlog of my trip. <laughs> like that's, that's just how I work. I feel safer that way. Generally speaking, I just think it's a safer method. And it's, it's weird. I know it sounds weird, but it's something I feel like you have to think about as a creator and as somebody who puts as much of their life online as I do. Uh, one of the other things that I will never reveal more than likely on my channel is Grumps, my partner of many, many years at this point. Uh, we've been together a long time, but I just honestly, even when I first started the channel, was never super duper comfortable revealing Grumps. And we have had the discussion and Grumps has been publicly places online. Uh, well, not online, but like in spaces. And I've talked about it before, you know, he's done music stuff and he's toured and now he's in corporate America. And that's what it is. Um, and we don't, he's like had his fame, as he calls it, his fame, you know? And he's not really interested in being on my space or doing videos with me like that. So at most you get maybe a back, a hand, an arm, a leg, you know, small things, but you're never going to see like full face grumps on my channel in a video. It's just not a thing I'm interested in. I'm not interested in doing. Um, I know people like are interested in it, but I just like, this is my thing. And <laughs> He feels similarly like this, this is my thing. It's not his thing. He doesn't really want to be a part of it. Now, the caveat there is he's occasionally shown up on members stuff, occasionally can be heard in the background on members stuff, but generally speaking is not like present in my content. So there's that. Something else I will never do as a content creator in the bookish world is judge how people read. I get so sick of seeing people judge how others read and like in a mean way, like, Oh, I can't believe you read romance. Like, it's beyond that. It's like, oh, you, you only read on Kindle. Oh, you only read this. You only read that. Who cares? I personally, as someone who reads a lot and loves to read, I'm always just happy that people are reading. So I'm never going to be the person out here judging you for how you read. Now, I may make jokes about like, oh, if you liked this book, I'm judging you. Like, but I'm not really. I don't care. It doesn't matter. What works for me doesn't have to work for you, vice versa. That generally is just me being really sarcastic and being goofy, not me being like serious, you know? I will never be the person that organizes the book club that meets regularly. If it is not for my patrons and members, it is not happening for me. Obviously, you're gonna be like, Isabel, you're in book clubs. Yes, yes, I am. I don't organize them. <laughs> I join them. And that's because I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to meet monthly and have to organize it. So yes, I am currently in two active book clubs, actually. Third one coming soon. <laughs> but I didn't organize them. Other people did and I just joined. <laughs> Okay. But also most of those book clubs have end dates. They're not like forevers. So like the Alona Andrews ones, we're doing the Innkeeper Chronicles. We will probably do another Alona Andrews title next series, but eventually we'll run out of Alona Andrews books and we'll either pick another author or we won't. Who knows? And I may or may not, you know, like I don't have to like be committed to like making sure this thing happens every month. <laughs> Same thing. Like I know chapter three, we're doing our Dark Olympus read along and I'm loving it. But again, I've already read three of these books. So it's not really a book club to me. It's like I'm reading, rereading things I know I'm pretty much going to enjoy. So that's different. And then the other thing I'm doing is just something I honestly couldn't resist saying no to because I, I have to do it. But I, again, did not organize it. I got messaged about it. So that's how this noggin works. We don't organize, we join. Because I already organized my members once and they torture me every month by making it a tie every time. <laughs> every time. I'm not joking. No matter how many members I have, they tie the pole every time. I can give them one option and they find a way to make it a tie. The next thing, I'm never going to be out here pretending that content creation is the easiest thing in the world and that this is just so simple and straightforward to do. Listen, it's not the hardest thing in the world either. I'm not saying that, but like this, this is one of those hobbies that I feel like, you know, if you turn it into a full-time job, that is like a feat and it's amazing and impressive and I'm proud of you. And if that's what you want to do, do it. I would, I think it would be amazing to make a full-time income on content. I would be thrilled, but that's probably never going to be me. And I'm okay with that. And I'm okay accepting that. And I'm okay with what I earn doing this. To me, that's just bonus money, but I'm not going to sit here and act like sitting down to film a couple videos, remembering to vlog your life, doing all these things is easy or that growth is like 
instantaneous and that there isn't a lot of effort and work put to get to somewhere. This is not a hobby for the faint of heart. And I think if you just want to make easy bookish content, I feel like Bookstagram and TikTok are your better bet because they're much rawer than YouTube tends to be. But even that, like, it's just, there's a lot to go into video editing. You either have to enjoy editing, which I personally love editing. Like, just taught myself a new editing software, y'all. Like, I'm a dork. It's fine. I enjoy that process, which is why I do this. So yeah, I'm just never gonna act like, oh my gosh, I just make so much money from content. Like, I've not even had a paid sponsored post. Like, we're just out here. You know, I get free products occasionally. I get offers for some things and I'll take them as I feel like it's something I want, but I'm making enough to basically buy some books or go to a book event once a year. And that's it. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. I have other <laughs> means of living. Uh, but yeah, I just think that sometimes people think this is easier than it is to like juggle all of this and read books. It, it just could be a lot. So I just, you know, I'm gonna say it's a lot. It's a lot sometimes and I love it and I love doing it, which is why I'm doing it. And that's that's the key point is if you love doing it, do it, but uh, don't force yourself into this. Don't feel like, oh, I just really wanna do it. Think long and hard, <laughs> think long and hard. But I'm also at the same time when I say this, I'm also the person who's gonna tell you that if you tell me you wanna try it, I'm gonna tell you to do it, go for it, give it a try. There's no harm in trying and deciding it's not for you. And I think that's a point more people need to learn sometimes with our hobbies. Like I'm not always the best about it either, but I do think sometimes you have to go, I enjoy this and I'm gonna keep doing it. Or, you know, this hobby isn't working for me and I'm not gonna keep doing it. That is absolutely valid. All right, and then the last point is that I'm not gonna concern myself with looking overly presentable or in different outfits every video, etc. So like I tend to wear things on repeat a lot. Um, this is a byproduct of the ADHD. I get hyper fixated on clothing items especially or like have comfort clothing items of the moment and I, they're just going to show up in a video a lot sometimes you know and that's okay it is what it is I try to switch it up I try to change occasionally between videos if I'm bulk filming but I don't always and I also you know don't actually wear a ton of makeup I don't wear foundation I basically for most videos I'm in blush uh eyeshadow eyeliner mascara I do my brows and I put on a lipstick of some kind that's it. Maybe a highlighter. It depends on my mood and where I'm feeling. Like today, no highlighter, but I keep it pretty minimal. Like I am not a heavy foundation person in real life. I don't like wearing full face makeup in real life. I like this basically is my go-to. I just don't enjoy it. So I'm not going to make myself do it to be on camera, which means also in like vlogs and stuff, I'm going to show you me with my greasy, dirty hair while like the dry shampoo soaks in when I have my hair clipped up or in a messy bun, because you know what? That's life. Like we're not all like I'm showering every day, but I'm not washing my hair every day. I just try to make sure I'm showing the varied stages. You know, when I have breakouts, I have breakouts. Like I'm just not going to sit here and try and hide me as a person like I don't want anyone to meet me at an event and be like she don't look like that on camera so that's my goal is to kind of look how I look in real life and I feel like I accomplish it pretty well nobody's nobody's told me otherwise so fingers crossed now somebody's gonna come up to me and tell me that because y'all are gonna be snotty about it it's fine I'm kidding but yeah I just to me it's important to just show real life and how I look and sometimes that's just looking a hot mess in pajamas and lazy clothes like literally gonna go put on sweatpants after this so it is what it is. But yeah, those are the things I don't personally worry about as a content creator and won't be, you won't catch me doing personally. Uh, who knows? This could change with time, but that's where I stand right now. I think that's it. I think that's it. So let me know uh, <laughs> what you love to see from content creators. Um, like I said, my, I think obviously with this, one of my goals is always authenticity and being as much the me as I can be. I don't feel like the me you're getting on camera is too different from the me my friends get. I maybe toned down just like a little, a little, but the vlog's the same. It's the same, <laughs> not gonna lie. So that's always my goal. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you look for in content creators. And if you don't wanna do that, you can leave me a star emoji in the comments. And I will uh, have links to Heather and Steph's video for you down there. And links to be my friend anywhere on the internet. And I'll talk to y'all in a few days. Bye. To leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be. Life with no distractions.
Forget.